Dragons, Gift of the Night Fury. Everyone in Burke was in a jolly mood. The annual winter holiday snoggotog was fast approaching. Decorations and lights were going up all over the village, and this year's celebration was sure to be one to remember now that Vikings and dragons were living in harmony. Early one morning, a few days before Snagletog, Hiccup and Toothless went flying just like they always did. Hiccup helped Toothless fly by controlling the mechanical tail he had made for his dragon. The best friends were practicing some new tricks when all of a sudden hundreds of Burke's dragons flew past them, all going in the opposite direction. One of the dragons got so close it knocked Hiccup's helmet right off his head. Toothless dove down after the helmet, but Hiccup knew there was no time. We'll get it later, bud, he told Toothless. Right now we need to get back and find out what's going on. Back in Berg, the Vikings were panicking. What's going on? cried Astrid, one of Hiccup's best friends. Why are the dragons flying away? Someone else asked. What if they're never coming back? Where are all of our dragons going? asked Stoic, the chief of Burke and Hiccup's father. The Vikings gathered in the great hall. Snagotog is ruined, someone yelled, but Stoic knew better. We've been perfectly happy celebrating Snagotog without dragons for generations, and there's no reason we can't do it again. We don't know where our dragons have gone off to, but we have to have faith that they'll be back soon. The Vikings weren't so sure, but... What choice did they have? Sangatog would have to go on without the dragons. That night, Hiccup and his friends walked sadly through the village. It seemed so empty without the dragons. The only one of Hiccup's friends who didn't seem sad was Fishlegs. No one knew what that was about, and Fishlegs wasn't telling. I have an idea, Astrid spoke up. Let's come up with a bunch of new holiday traditions to bury the sadness. You might be on to something, Hiccup agreed with her. Easy for you to say, Toughnut said to Hiccup. Your dragon can't go anywhere without you. Three days later, Toothless still hadn't returned to Burke. Hiccup felt sadder than he had in a long time. He was wandering around the village when he saw fish legs carrying a large basket of fish into a barn. What's that about? Hiccup wondered. Soon fish legs exited the barn. His basket of fish was gone. Once the coast was clear, Hiccup peeked through the barn doors, curious to see what was inside. And that's when fish legs' grandcle dragon, Meat Mug, burst out of the barn and flew high up into the air, taking Hiccup along for the ride. Hiccup, where are you going? Astrid yelled to her friend. But what about presents, Meat Lug? Fish legs called to his escaping dragon. But Meat Lug and Hiccup were already too far away to hear them. Astrid, Fish Legs, and the rest of Hiccup's friends wandered into the barn where they found a pile of eggs, Meat Lug's eggs, that gave a- Astrid an idea for a new Snoglatog tradition. Since everyone in Burke was missing their dragons, they could give everyone a dragon egg as a present. Meanwhile, Meatlug and Hiccup arrived at a nearby island. All of Burke's dragons were there except Toothless, and there were lots and lots of baby dragons. Everywhere Hiccup looked, a new dragon was hatching. Now Hiccup understood why all the dragons had left Burke. This island was where they came to have babies. Hiccup watched as a mother gronko pushed her eggs into a pool. The eggs exploded underwater and out swam baby gronkles. It's a good thing those don't hatch on Burke, Hiccup observed. But little did Hiccup know that his friends had placed one of Meatlug's eggs into every hut in the village. Astrid was pleased with her new tradition. Fishlegs agreed everyone is going to be so surprised, he said jittily. 
but instead of squeals of delight, explosions started going off throughout the village. That's when Astrid and Fishlegs figured out how baby Gronkles hatched. The eggs explode! Astrid shouted. The villagers ran out of their huts to safety. This was not exactly the warm, fuzzy holiday tradition Astrid had hoped for. Back on the island, the dragons and their babies were getting ready to go back home to Burke. They wanted to be there in time for Snagletog. The older dragons started to fly away, but the baby dragons were having trouble. They were still too little to fly. Luckily, Hiccup had an idea. A few minutes later, everyone in Burke was staring up at the sky. Their dragons and Hiccup had, had returned, and they were hauling a ship filled with dragon babies to the Great Hall, announced Stoic. We finally have something to celebrate. That evening, the Great Hall was filled with sounds of happy Vikings and dragons. Everyone agreed that this was the best Nangotaga ever. Everyone except Hiccup, Toothless, was still nowhere to be found. Ashton, where did Toothless go? Hiccup asked. I don't know, Ashton replied. But just as she finished speaking, the door to the Great Hall opened and zoomed in Toothless. Hiccup gave his dragon a great big hug, and Toothless placed Hiccup's Nagletog present right on his head. It was Hiccup's lost helmet. Hiccup thanked Toothless. You're amazing, bud. Happy Snagletog, shouted Astrid. The next morning, Toothless wanted to go for a ride, and he wanted to use his old tail, the one that Hiccup had to control. You don't need this anymore, Hiccup told him. Toothless fanned out his new tail and then smashed it against the ground, staring at Hiccup. All the while, Hiccup finally understood his friend never wanted to fly without him ever again. So Hiccup attached the old tail and off they went. It was indeed the best Nangotog ever.